everyone and welcome back to TLC Cares. My name is Jolene Chikese and I'm a registered nurse and I'm from TLC Private Home Care in Buzzards Bay, Howitch and now Hingham. Today I'm talking with Peg Fuller. She's um, from Gentiva Hospice. Welcome Peg. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Um, can you tell me what you do for Gentiva Hospice? Sure. Um, I am a hospice care consultant which means that I work with um, partners in the community, in the health community. Um, those could be assisted livings, mm -hmm. uh, skilled nursing facilities, hospitals, private duty agencies like yeah. yourself, VNA organizations, and uh, senior centers. And I work with those different communities to um, educate them about hospice okay. and help them to be able to um, identify possible hospice patients. Okay, yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit about, does hospice mean that you're dying? I know it doesn't. Right. Well, truthfully, we're all dying. Right. Um, that di is true. Dying um, is part of the human condition. Mm -hmm. Happy Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> um, but hospice is for patients who have an acute or a chronic illness. Okay. Usually in its fourth and final stage, end stage is okay. what they sometimes call it. And they're usually experiencing symptoms that indicate an, an ongoing decline. So what are these acute or chronic illnesses? They can what could be, they be, right, they can be um, CHF. Which is congestive heart failure. Correct, COPD, which is car respiratory. Yes, <laughs> um, it could be cancer. Okay. It could be uh, any uh, number of different dementias. Okay. Most of the most popular dementia is, of course, Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's also Lewy body dementia and cerebral vascular dementia as well. And we live on Cape Cod, and it's very prevalent. It it's is. A very elderly community, um, one of the highest in the nation. Yes. So it's a lot down here. It is indeed, yes. Mm -hmm. So these acute or chronic illnesses, do you have to qualify for hospice? Well, yes, the quick answer is yes, but the way that works is uh, anybody can request uh, a patient and or their family okay. or a caregiver can request a hospice evaluation. And what does that hospice evaluation look like? That is a hospice nurse, okay. RN, um, who is employed by a hospice company okay. coming out and doing an evaluation which looks like uh, interviewing the caregivers. Okay. Um, they could be interviewing a charge nurse or a private duty nurse okay. to get a uh, verbal report as to the uh, drastic and sudden decline okay. that usually warrants a call to hospice. Okay. They're also looking at clinical information and then what they're doing is they're reporting this to a doctor. Okay. And then a doctor makes the decision based on that report as to whether this patient has a six month or less prognosis. Which doctor? Is it their primary care physician that knows them very well or is it the doctor at the facility? So it's actually two doctors. Okay. Excellent question. Um, the first doctor is oftentimes their primary care. Okay. Um, if you go to a, cardiologi a cardiologist, they say, oh, I usually let the PCP okay. make that type of referral. And so that PCP would make a referral okay. to a hospice organization. Right. They may present a couple of different hospice organizations to the patient and family okay. and give the patient and family the choice. So and if th what happens, um, how do they decide? Right, and so uh, usually what we suggest is that they speak to the different hospice organizations. Right. Uh, also, they can look online. Okay. Not all hospice companies are the same. No, nope, I'm. Some are small and more of a boutique, which is what we are here, especially on the Cape. Mm -hmm. And um, others are larger. Um, and once they decide, then. Uh, that PCP is writing an order 
okay. to screen and admit, if appropriate, okay. for hospice. So your suggestion would be the family interview at least, what, two hospice companies I so they can decide? That. Yeah, so they okay. have something to compare it to. Yeah. yeah, and not just make the first choice. Choice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And what do, when you're out there talking with the families, what's the number one question that they have, do you think? Um, well, they ask, of course, does this mean I'm dying? Yeah. And so I usually tell them, again, happy Thursday, we're, we're all, all dying. dying. <laughs> um, but also they have questions like, uh, do I have to be a DNR? A do not resuscitate. Correct. Yeah. And that is, that's a myth. They do not. Okay. We understand that that is a, um, and that's not the case with all hospices. Right. That's with Gentiva Hospice. Okay. Um, we understand that that is a big decision to make. It is. And so we allow the patient and family to make that decision, oftentimes further down the road. Okay. Um, they're also asking if they can stay on their medication. Okay. And um, we will do a uh, me medication reconciliation. Okay. Which is with our the nurse, right? Correct. Yeah. Which is our nurse, mm -hmm. uh, usually sitting down with the patient and their family, and quite possibly another nurse. Okay. So that could be the private duty nurse. That could be a nurse at a at a skilled nursing facility. Yeah. Um, and they're looking at all the medications. Okay. And are these medications beneficial? especially at the end of one's life. And we were talking before um, about cholesterol medication. Right. It's, it's not when you're reaching the end of your life. Right. I think at that time you should be having ice cream and... Exactly, you should be <laughs> able to eat what you want. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. That's, so many people think that hospice is giving up. And truthfully, hospice is uh, taking control of a very important part of your life. Right. The end of your life. The end of your life. And deciding what that looks like. And coming up with goals. What you want your goals of care to look like. Okay. And oftentimes, going to the hospital, a hospital is a place uh, set up for to cure. Right. And oftentimes, at the end of one's life, a, hospice is, or a hospital is not necessarily a beneficial place. Right. Especially if the person has dementia. Right. Um, and so, um, if one is making a decision that they don't want to go to the hospital anymore, mm -hmm. if they, fa if the family is deciding that getting their loved one to the doctor is more harm than good and takes too much effort and takes a whole day of energy from them. Right, Ex and as it does, yep. E exactly. Then this is when they want to start thinking about hospice. Okay, I gotcha. Um, who decides if a patient is ready? Is it the doctor that decides if the patient is ready for hospice care? You have to have the certain diagnosis. Correct. And what, is there certain criteria? There is. There's, a, there's certain criteria based on the diagnosis. Okay. You do have to qualify for hospice. Okay. And you have to continually qualify for hospice. Got it. Uh, the first two qualification periods are 90 days. Okay. So that's a total of 180 days. Okay. And then after that, um, a person is requalified every 60 days. Gotcha. And okay. we do have people on multiple uh, qualification or certification periods. And sometimes I, I understand that, you know, they will decide if it's a uh, six month or less, but I've seen people on hospice for a year. Yes, it does. That's what I mean about those multiple qualification right. periods. And so you need to qualify based on um, the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you have end stage uh, cancer yes. with um, metastases to different parts of the body, oftentimes that will qualify you. Gotcha. Um, uh, stage four or end stage COPD or CHF, there are other signs and symptoms that go along with that. Both yeah. of them are. Um, shortness of breath, not being able to participate in activities of daily living, right, okay. needing increased. A sign of, dec of decline usually means an increase in need for help. So that could be needing help with activities of daily living. Right. That could be an increase in medication. That could be an increase in equipment. Okay. 
maybe going from a walker to a wheelchair. Okay. Now, when someone goes on hospice, um, I've seen you come in very quickly, then they get a hospital bed, then Correct. they get everything that they possibly need in the home, and it's part of their hospice benefit. Can you explain the hospice benefit? Absolutely. So the hospice benefit is a Medicare Part A benefit. Okay. That if you have a paycheck, you're, get, you're paying into that. We're paying into it right We're, now. Every day. <laughs> are, yes, we are. Yeah. And so there is a certain percentage of that Medicare benefit that is going towards your hospice benefit. Okay. And so that money is on layaway. So when that time comes, we've already paid into that benefit. Okay. And oftentimes, we want, as hospice providers, we want to see these patients be able to take advantage of that benefit gotcha. by coming in earlier than later. I know a lot of people wait till, you know, they're really, really sick and then the family decides, you know, let's go on hospice and it's a week, maybe two. Right. And they could have gone on it. A couple of a, months. A couple of months. Yes, and, yes. And had the great quality of life. And also end. a strong relationship with their their hospice provider. Right. You know, having that relationship with their nurse and a social worker mm -hmm. and a chaplain wrapped around them and their family, right. walking with them down this road, helps to take a, away a tiny bit of that pain. Right. It helps them to understand what to expect and what's normal. And I've seen it so much more now. I never thought I would be able to be a hospice nurse, but I am watching with this company and us working side by side with many hospice companies that we're watching patients and it's beautiful it's actually it can be it can be a, it a holy moment yep exactly it definitely is a holy moment yeah and, and it and it can be what the patient wants the patient can want you know would want sometimes their family all around right sometimes they don't I get it Some, yeah yeah um, now let's talk about uh, do not resuscitate do I if I wanted to have my hospice benefit do I have to be a do not resuscitate you do not okay no you do not. Until maybe I decide in a month or two if I'm on hospice that, that I want right, to. Right, right. We're going to educate you right. as to what those procedures look like okay, and what those procedures are ultimately going to yield and help you make an educated decision. Comes back to the goals exactly. from the first evaluation. Exactly. Okay. Yes. I understand. Yes. Okay. Um, what else do I want to ask? Um, how does a person, what, how does a person decide between two hospice companies? I have a private home care company and I know sometimes people, it comes down to, um, you know, we have a nurse in charge right. and people like that, they respect that and then sometimes it's about cost and we have to, we have to educate, you know, anything is education from a nurse and from a company. Right. Um, how do you think people decide between the two hospice companies? What, what are they looking for? One of the questions that I um, tell people to ask is, how often will the nurse be coming to visit me? And, and how often will the nurse be coming? Right, so that is different, okay? So all, the, all hospice companies get a certain dollar amount from Medicare, mm -hmm. and how they decide to chop that up mm -hmm. and pay out is up to them. And Gentiva has decided to invest in nursing. And so our nurses will come out a minimum of two times a week. Okay. So we start with sending our nurses out two times a week. And we at can- At the beginning. At the beginning. And we can increase those visits- As needed. As the condition declines. Okay. Up to daily nursing visits. Wow. That's so that is a major difference. Yeah, okay. So that's what, you know, you talk about during the evaluation and that could mean a, a big decision. Absolutely. And it, another decision is how um, you present it. Exactly. You know, it has to, it's a big decision, I would, I would think, to go on hospice. Um, tell me a little bit about Gentiva. So Gentiva is a national company. Mm -hmm. We're formerly known as Kindred and uh, we, we, have, we've been around 20 years. Okay. We have 
let's see, locations, offices in Sandwich, Mass. That's Sandwich, that's how Peg and I know each other. Right, <laughs> right. And that's the newest location in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. We uh, opened that office about a year ago. Okay. Uh, we have an office in Auburndale, which is Newton. Okay. We have an office in Fall River. We have an office in Warwick, Rhode Island. And we are in the process of opening an office up on the North Shore, okay. as well as out in the Springfield area. Great, great. And you're nationwide, correct? We are nationwide, yes. So Gentiva Hospice. Yes. Awesome. Um, I don't really think I have any more questions. Um, hospice, I think, is a big decision, and people need to know about it, not be afraid of it. I think that what I see in the community is people, you know, are afraid of hospice, but you know, two things we know in our life, we're, we're born and, and we're, we're going die. to die. Everyone is, that's how it's gonna be. We don't know how it's going to be, but if we get this kind of a diagnosis and we choose hospice, it could be a beautiful ending. It you can. just You just don't know. Um, but I hope, I hope this educates people in the community, and if they have any questions, could they call you, Peg? Absolutely. Yeah. I believe my uh, contact information will be posted, and I okay. welcome calls anytime. And if you need to get in touch with Peg, you could also call myself at TLC Private Home Care, and I can put you in touch with Peg. Um, but thank you. Thank you for thank coming you. and thank educating our me. community. I think it's really, really important. Um, again, my name is Jolene Chikese, a registered nurse from TLC Private Home Care. Thank you for watching.